Mr. Metzger. Mr. Tossel. Oh, wait. Oh, you're my not beard Mr. grew. And you're not Mr. Tossel. I am not. Is it Tassel um, or Tossel? I've known him for tassel. 15 years or 12 years. I still don't know his last name. All I, right. It's whatever comes out. So, Perry, how you doing? Oh, I'm great. Good. I'm great. How hey, the heck you are just, you? You just changed my name. I did, Mr. Tassel. <laughs> All right. So, Tassel. Tassel. I can't see who's on or if there's questions or comments. Is there any questions from anyone on anything we just covered for the last hour? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Hello, Mr. Weaver. Now I see it. Mr. Walls. Here, this might be faster. There we go. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. My audio right. is good. Your okay. audio is good. Mr. Weaver, Mr. Walls just said, hello, Mr. Lama. How are you, sir? Good to see you guys. We're going to do a little mini seminar today. So explain the first part again. There's our future right, CMA rewind. affiliate, Mr. Mark Moore. <laughs> Mr. Moore in the house. Aaron O'Neill. Hello. All right. Hey, look, Maya Edge said hello. Hey, my Edge. Hold on. I'm just going to pull this up so I can see. Oh, here we go. All right. All right. We're going to do a little mini seminar for you guys because I think this is very important for the time of year that we're going into. And it's a basic topic, but I think there's some details here. And uh, hello, everybody. We got Mr. Tossel. He is uh, on his way to Orlando. So standing in, the famous, the great, the smart, and the good-looking Michael Perry. Thank you. Yeah. Em emphasis on the good-looking or emphasis on the smart? I don't know. I'm just reading what you typed. Oh, got it. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know which. So <laughs> I, yeah, I, I apologize. I didn't know what to emphasize there. Um, so, all right, Miss Denise Ramos. All right, everyone, let's dive in. So, Perry, do you want to pull up our topic of the day here? Do you want to share? It's this? there. Oh, it's there. Yes. Okay. It's everyone there can... already turning turning every right. phone call into a student. Okay. Is that going to be um, – this is something, by the way, that I did at the Super Show one year. And we're not going to go through the entire uh, presentation, but we are going to cover – the phone call part of this presentation. And, and here's what I try to tell everybody. If this is something that you know, right, and you know every detail of this, it's not about you knowing it. It's about being able to train your staff to know the concepts of this. And don't ever let anyone ever answer your phone if they're not trained on how to answer a phone call. Okay. So we're going to go through just uh, – the basics of this because this month august and september should be your biggest enrollment months of the year especially if you work with kids okay everyone's transitioning out of summer and transitioning into back to school and parents are looking for activities for their kids and if you can't properly set appointments and get people in your door you're going to lose a big opportunity all right so with that perry are we going to we able to bring that up bigger or do you want to leave it that uh, way? That's as big as we're going to be able to get it. Okay. I can zoom in a little bit. But, you know, I was thinking as we were talking about this topic, you remember when we were getting the Google phone calls and being able to listen to all the all the phone calls from our instructors and we realized how important it is to to make sure that we're closing people on these on these phone calls. Absolutely, it is. It's it's extremely important important because if you guys keep your stats, you'll realize, um, you know how well you're doing or not doing, and when you're missing opportunities on how to get people in your door, that can equate to tens of thousands of dollars. So with that being said, here Perry, I'm going to give something here to. 
to Miss Marion. Stand by one second. Talk to the folks because I just got a text. The, the cars just got detailed. He needs a check, and I feel bad. <laughs> let me let me put him there. Hold on. The guy can wait. So back to what I was saying before is we uh, we had a service where we were able to listen to every single phone call, and all of our guys really thought, hey, we we've got the phone call procedure down. We know how to what to do when somebody calls, when we answer the phone, how to sign them up for a trial or whatever the case may be. But what we started to find out was, I, I don't know if you remember this, Mr. Metzger, what we started to find out was people were on the phone for 10, 15 minutes for an inquiry call. So what Mr. Metzger is gonna talk about right now is, is uh, just what's the most important thing and just streamlining to the, the crux of what it is, is getting people in the door. All right, so let's go. So there's there, with the phone call, there's two types of things. So let's hit the slide. The, the first thing is incoming calls, right? People are calling you because they want information. Now, and I'm not talking about solicitor calls and parents calling. I'm talking about in, information calls, info calls. People are calling for information and you need to understand how to quickly get the appointment. And then of course, there's a different system on the next slide is outgoing calls. Okay. Yep. Outgoing calls. There it is. <laughs> Just to keep it <laughs> simple. <laughs> All right. Two types of calls here we're going to talk about. Okay. All right. So next slide, let's talk about this incoming calls. And let's talk about the next slide. This is very important because this is what a lot of people do. You try to sell your service over the phone. Do not try selling over the phone. When people, when people are calling for information, um, a lot of times we start selling or overselling our product or our service. And in our business, that is not what we want to do. Next slide. This is the mission. You just need to get them in the door. That's what you need to do. And as Mike, as Mr. Perry here was saying, you don't want to spend 20 minutes. You don't have the time to spend 20 minutes on the phone, right? So you have to make sure that you or your team or your staff or your helpers or your assistants or whoever's answering that phone needs to understand that there's only one thing we need to do and that's get them in the door. Why? Why is this so important? Because to, to an average parent or person in the community to, that has no martial arts experience, you're just another martial arts school. So whatever questions they're asking you, they're asking everybody else that they're calling to get information. And what is the number one question that they typically ask? How much are the classes? Well, when they do that, a lot of people, here's what you'll do. You'll brainwash yourself, right? Or you'll hear people say this and you'll believe this but I'm going to tell you why I don't believe this. People will say, we're transparent. We, we don't want to do a bait and switch. We're transparent. Stop thinking that way. Get them in the door because you, you need to show them why you're different than the rec center that's charging $50 a month. If you say we charge a hundred a month and they hang up the phone and they call the next guy and he says, we charge 70, well, most likely they're not even giving you a chance. They're going to the guy that charges 70 because they don't know the difference. They think a martial arts school is a martial arts school. They don't know that there's different quality. There's different levels of instruction. There's different professionalism. The customer does not know that. So now what you may be thinking is, well, I'm going to tell them the price and I'm going to tell them how we're different. Well, now you're getting into selling. Now you're trying to get, now you're getting into selling over the phone, but the guy who charges $40 a month, he's going to tell them why he's different too, right? We need to get them in the door and it's not a bait and switch. I'll go over that shortly, but it's just getting people more educated so they can make a better decision on if they want to spend extra money, if you happen to be more or less or whatever, but I'll encourage people to check out the guy down the street, but I need them to come inside and experience what we have. So next slide. You need on that phone to get them in the door. The way to get them in the door is to set an appointment. You have to set the appointment. Okay. So 
next slide. Let's go through this real quick. This is something all of you should have. You should have some kind of template and you, you can enlarge that a little bit maybe, Perry, if that's possible. Um, and I believe this is on the Maya Edge site, is it, Perry? Not not this one. Well, the, the next script is on the All Maya right, Edge but we site. have a script on there. But at the end of the day, you need a specific uh, outline or script. Now, here's the thing that I want to say as a disclaimer. I don't like scripts. I don't like somebody to memorize my script. I like to make sure that I teach them the concept, right? Now, let me give you the concept. And then you can make your own script and get somebody to understand the gist of what we're trying to do if somebody calls for information. But if we were looking at this, it's a great day of championship martial arts. This is Mr. Metzger or Sensei Mike or Sabanim or whatever you do. How may I help you? I'd like information on your classes. Now, listen, this is very important. It does not matter what they ask you when you say, how can I help you, right? Now, the, the reason why the how can I help you when you answer the phone is important is because you're ending with a question, okay? You always have to end with a question. Now, in this example of this script, they're saying, I'd like some information on classes. Or they might say, yeah, I'm calling to see how much are your classes, right? It doesn't matter what they say. They might say, do you teach uh, MMA? Do you teach Kung Fu? Do you teach whatever? It doesn't matter. My response is always the same. And that is, well, are you inquiring for yourself or someone else? That's another question. I got to take back control of the question. Who are they calling for, right? I'm calling for my son. How old is your son? He's five. That's a great age to start martial arts or karate or whatever it is. Does he have any experience in martial arts? Whether it's yes or no, I'm setting myself up to get the appointment. So in this case, they said no, and you'll see that on this script, if you can read it, but it says, well, what I'd like to do for all new students, or what I'd like to do, especially if your child has had some experience, is bring them in for a free evaluation. Now, if you can't do one-on-one -on -one evaluations, you put them into your beginner class, it's fine. Again, this is a concept. If you say, I wanna set them up for a free trial class, here's why I don't like that, or an intro class, Here's why I don't like that. I don't know what a free trial class consists of. I don't know what an intro class is, but everybody understands an evaluation, okay? I wanna bring your child in for, because they may have experience, they may not have experience, okay? I wanted, I'd love to bring your child in for an in, uh, evaluation class. It's only about 20 to 30 minutes where we will evaluate, and it says it on this, again, it's small, but it says, Focus, flexibility, balance, and coordination. Now, this is for a child, okay? I want to evaluate your child on his focus, flexibility, balance, and coordination, right? There is no cost for this. I have a time tonight at this time or tomorrow at this time. What's better for you? Right for the appointment, right? Now, they may say, well, before I set that up, and I'm not gonna go through all these objections right now, right? But we have two sample objections. Like, can you give me an idea how much it costs? Let me check with my spouse. But here's the thing. If they say, well, before I come in for that, you know, how much are your classes? We don't lie to them. And a lot of people in this industry will, we're getting double echoes. Let's see, audio's fine there. Sorry guys, let's see. We're, we're uh, good. We're good. We're okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. The thing is, is what we say to them in the industry, people will say, well, ignore. If they ask you a question, first, just ignore it and just say, well, we have something, whatever, like, you know, whatever. Or they'll say, well, we have things that break down to $12 a week or we don't do that. If somebody says, well, before I bring them in, how much are your classes? Well, we have several different programs. We want to find which program is best for your child. That's why we want to evaluate them and test them on their focus, flexibility, balance, and coordination. Once we do that, we will tell you which program we think is best, and we'll sit down with you and go over that with all the different pricing for that specific program. Do you think you have 20 minutes today at 6, or is tomorrow at 6.30 better? And I always try to give them two options. If you just say, well, what day is good for you? It's all over the board now. They're just thinking, oh, you know, this, that, and the other. Give them two options, okay? Now, if they say, well, can you give me an idea of how much it costs? 
Well, if you see this script here, what we say, because we don't sell memberships like a health club with us, we literally do have programs and I need to know which program would be best for this student. But we put, unlike most martial arts schools, we don't sell memberships, uh, we sell programs. But if it's a monthly fee you're looking for, we have programs that start as low as $69 a month and they go up from there. Is that something that you think may work for your budget? That's a question. And they're going to say yes, no. But I'll say, well, look, really want you to see. Let's see if your child even likes it. We want you to meet our instructors, our staff, make sure you're comfortable. Can you come into? I'm going right back to the appointment. OK, very, very important to understand the uh, the, the 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 goal of that incoming call is one thing only, and that's to set the appointment and get them in. OK. All right. Next, everybody I recommend should have one of these. Now this, Perry, is this the, uh, oh, wow. where's the phone script success? Bear with me one second. Uh. Yep, that, uh, that's the presentation. And then the next slide, there it is. All right enlarge that a little bit again this is a great training tool that everybody should have and this is the one we you said we do have this on the my edge site okay we do by the way if you're not on my edge get on it no, i'm kidding or just make your own little sheet because this is a great tool for your team to use to make sure we're collecting all the information right they fill it in the caller the age the name now they're they're just filling this out as we're going through one of the very important things on here is source of inquiry. Well, how did you hear about us? Can I ask how you heard about us? That is a great question if they're trying to take control and ask you a million questions. Say, well, let me ask you this. How did you hear about us? I want to know, is it a referral, social media? Was it a flyer? Was it from Meet the Teacher? Like, wh where did you hear from us? Because as you get more of that data, I'm going to focus more of my time, obviously, on where I'm getting the most leads from, okay? But this is a great little cheat sheet that everybody should have, okay? Now, let's jump, Perry. We're gonna go through, we're not, so we're gonna go through the perfect intro. We're gonna skip that because I wanna get back to the phone calls. So let's get to... Let me get to the, here. Slide right, so we're number... Gonna... 26, slide number 26. Now, what we're not going over today, guys, and maybe we'll do this on a future show because I think it's important, is the four steps to a perfect intro lesson or evaluation lesson, right? Um, because again, do you know how to do an evaluation lesson? I'm sure you do, right? But is it systemized so it's duplicatable, so it's easier to train and teach your staff but that's for the, the, the future. Now, this is very, very important. When you're making outgoing calls, right? Well, who are you making outgoing calls to? At the end of the day, you're making outgoing calls to leads. Either a lead is somebody that didn't show up for their appointment. A lead is somebody that came to your school and tried out a class. A lead is somebody that did a trial and didn't enroll, right? Okay, next slide. When you make outgoing calls, this is what I found in our industry. When I ask people, how well do you follow up? Some people say, I don't follow up. We don't follow up well. Or some people say, oh yeah, we follow up. And I'll say, well, how often? Come in and did you have a chance to talk to your spouse? Do you want to come in and enroll? Go ahead, Perry. I was just going to say, we lost you there for, for a second. You said, how often? Yeah, it's, it's how often do you follow up with a lead? And it becomes very uncomfortable because it feels like we're bugging people if we keep calling and asking the same question. Basically, however you disguise it, do you keep calling someone saying, well, do you want to sign up? Do you want to keep, do you want to come in? Do you want to try out another class? Do you want, it's uncomfortable. So a lot of times we just don't follow up anymore if we already got a no, right? Or you know, we're not ready to enroll right now. You know, we'll let you know when we're ready. A lot of people will just 
people in our industry, our program directors, school owners, you'll feel uncomfortable calling them back. But you need a reason to call them back without asking the same question. So next slide. Okay. You can make an outgoing call and not ask them if they want to enroll, but ask them if they would like to attend an event that you're hosting at your school. So now, for example, this time of year, right, it's back to school time. So if you work with um, uh, children, if you work with kids, this is a great time to do a free Focus for Better Grades seminar that we're hosting free for all the kids in the community to get them ready for the back to school season. And it's only going to be an hour. We're going to do a one hour seminar. We're going to give kids a sheet on the little tools or steps uh, on how to focus and do better at school. It's a free event, Mrs. Johnson. I know you inquired a couple weeks ago or you did a trial or, or you, you know, you, in, you inquired about classes. But the reason I'm calling now is I wanted to see if if you would be interested in attending this free event. And again, it shouldn't be longer than an hour. It's a huge confidence boost. Could I put you down and reserve one of your spots? So now I'm not uncomfortable calling these people because I'm not calling them if they want to enroll in martial arts. I'm calling them to let them know that we're hosting a free community event, right? Go ahead, let's see. Yeah, I was, was gonna say, Colby Nelson said, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Perry. I was given what would now be considered bad advice two years ago. I was told following up any amount of times was considered desperate. Well, it's, it's, I, by the way, are we desperate? I mean, I don't know how bad you need new students, right? But at the end of the day, if somebody took their time out, listen, this is important to understand. If somebody took time out to call you and get information, they didn't do it because they were not interested in martial arts. They did it because they are interested in martial arts. However, when you took that call initially and they came in and they didn't enroll, why didn't they enroll? Well, we know that most of the time it's because of price uh, or commitment, right? Or the schedule. But we don't know what was going on right then and there in their lives at that time. Now, during the transitional times, and what I mean by that is coming out of school into summer, coming out of summer into the school year, or over the holidays. If somebody inquired about your classes two weeks ago, and for whatever reason, they couldn't do it, I'm not gonna call them two weeks later and just say, how about now, right? I'm gonna, for, for example, invite them to an event. But what if they can't make the event? Oh, we'd love to, but we're out of town this Saturday. We can't make that event, but I appreciate the call. But now in a couple weeks, I'm gonna call again because school started. Routines have changed. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm just following up. I know school started. I wanted to check in on Johnny and see how things were going. Now I might I, I might want to see if, if things have changed and if they want to enroll. Or, or the way I do that is, next slide. I'm, the reason I'm calling Mrs. Johnson is, first of all, how, you know, how's Johnny doing? Did school start? Are you guys getting into a routine? I wanted to call to let you know that we're doing a great back to school special right now. And you can do that for, get four weeks of classes for only 40, this is an example, everybody, four weeks of classes for only $49. Uh, and that includes a uniform. Unfortunately, well, I'm gonna go into this in a minute on the four steps of selling, but now I'm calling them for a reason now that I have a special. So if you look at the thing, there's summer specials, there's back to school specials, there's a, Fourth of July special you could do. I mean, there's just different specials you can offer, holiday specials, but it gives me another reason to reach out and call. The other thing when you leave out go when you do an outgoing call is don't leave a message until you've tried three times, right? On the third time when you leave a message, you can tell them the reason you're calling, whether it's inviting them to an event or if it's a special, and say, uh, you know, let me know if there's something you're interested in. If I don't hear from you, I'll give you a courtesy call in the next couple of days to see if this is something you'd want to take advantage of. If you tell them that on the message, you're not going to be so uncomfortable following up with them because you told them you're going to call them on the message. What's right. uncomfortable is if you just say, let me know if you're interested, you can reach me at blank, 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 hang up. 
and they don't call you and now you're uncomfortable. You're like, man, they didn't call. They must not be interested. So always say, you know, if I don't hear from you first, I will uh, let you know. Um, so much back to school t content for y'all in the August social media calendar. You yeah. got that wrong. It's so much back to school content. I'm sorry. All right. Many yeah, we have, so, because you know why? And, and, and by the way, Shelby's our social media director. There's a social media calendar that you can, you can subscribe to and have it where it's literally copy and paste. But August and September is such a crucial time right now to make sure that you do everything you can to capitalize on the enrollments that you can be getting right now. Now, when you make these outgoing calls, let's review this. Next slide. You have to train somebody. And again, this is a concept to understand the four steps of selling. So when you call, next slide, first thing you say is the reason. Hey, Mrs. Johnson, this is Mr. Metzger from Championship Martial Arts. The reason I'm calling is I wanted to tell you about, about our back to school special where you can get four weeks of martial arts classes for just $49. But that's where most people just stop talking. And you're going to wait for them to say, oh, okay, well, thanks for calling or that sounds great or whatever. But you don't stop talking. You go right into step two, which is now you need to sell it. So the reason I'm calling is I want to tell you about our back to school special four weeks for 49. It would give you a great opportunity. Now, this is my sell to see the values and benefits of our program and see if martial arts is something Johnny would enjoy now that school's starting and give him something active to do. Number three, I don't stop talking. Unfortunately, especially now with with uh, COVID and everything, I can only take 10 people on this special. And I am calling you because you had inquired a few weeks ago. Um, next slide, that's my call to action. I'm only can take 10 people, 20 people, whatever it is. Would you like to reserve one of these spots and take advantage of this special? That's the closing question. So I don't even know if this has it, but at the end of the day, it's you gotta state the reason you're calling, okay? You gotta sell it. And you don't spend 20 minutes selling it. It's two sentences. You just got to paint a picture for them. Like, why would I? Why Why would I want to do this right now? Well, to see the values and benefits of the program, to see if, something, if martial arts is something Johnny would enjoy, to give him something active to do now that school is starting. A call to action. I can only take 10 people on this. You know, close it. Would you like to reserve one of those spots? Now, let's say they say, you know what? Let me talk to Johnny or let me talk to my husband or let me talk to my wife. Let me see. No problem at all. I'll tell you what, if it's okay with you, Mrs. Johnson, if I don't hear from you first, I will give you a courtesy call when we get down to about four or five spots left to just see if you want to snag one of those spots if I don't hear from you first. Would that be okay? That's a question. And and usually they say yes. And sometimes they might say, you know, no, we'll call you. And if they do, that's fine because in a couple of weeks, I'm going to call them and invite them to a free event, a free community event. By the way, that's a key thing. Don't just say free event, right? Because it sounds like it's just the martial arts school. I like to say we're hosting a free community event for all the kids in the community to get them ready for the back to school season. And I always say it shouldn't take longer than an hour because people don't wanna think that they're gonna be spending their entire Saturday at your school. So go ahead, Perry. And I was gonna say, and you'd probably use the same four steps if it wasn't the special, if it was the event as well, if you're inviting people to the event. Yeah, anytime I'm doing it, but by the way, anytime I'm doing anything, I use the four steps of selling, right? I mean, what is, the, if somebody's calling you, we already know the reason, because they say it. Yeah, I'm calling to get information about your classes. Well, can you sell it, have a call to action and close it and spend about, Perry, what was the, the the role play I did with all the program directors that we timed it? And I said, everybody's got to get the appointment in how, how many seconds? Three minutes? I think we, should, we try to get it in three minutes. Three minutes. Just get the appointment. Three minutes. And by the way, once you set an appointment, are you doing a confirmation email? Or are you doing a confirmation call and a reminder call? A confirmation call could be the night before. A reminder call could be the day of. But we tell them, by the way, we're going to give you a confirmation call and a reminder call the day of. What's the best number we could reach you at? So just, 
I mean, these little details, guys, makes a big difference. Small details equal big results in the school. The best way to market a mass intro and only target new students. The best way to market uh, a mass intro is to be out in front of your community. That is the best way. The best way is not through social media. The best way is not just flyers out, out. The best way is for you to be in front of your audience. So for example, right now, Perry, every one of our staff members basically is in a school today, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're struggling right now trying to get cover schools, but yeah, yeah, not everybody's only in are we struggling. Listen, did we not put an ad out? Did we not hire people to just man boots and train them just to, on on how to let people know about our free focus for better grade seminar? I mean, we've hired people just to be at a booth because to tell them about our free focus for better grade seminar. They don't need to be martial artists, and they're not wearing black belts. They're just there to let parents know that Championship Martial Arts is running this free community event on Saturday. Uh, if you would be, in, if you're interested, we can we can get your child's name here. We have two times. We only have limited spots. I mean, again, four steps of selling, but that's how important it is getting in front of your audience. However, it does not mean we don't do social media and we don't do the flyers and everything else. Right. But technology will never ever take the place of face to face. Never. Face to face, you're going to get the best results. So that is the best way to to market a, a mass enrollment. By the way, the other thing that I'll tell you too, Mr. Stewart, is uh, if you know you're going to do a mass intro on a Saturday, let's say, plan it out and have a buddy week that week. So any buddies that come to your, your school that week with your students, you're inviting them to that. Set up schools that week. So you're inviting them to that. Call all your leads so you're inviting them to that. Don't just focus on one thing. Here's, here's what we do. A lot of times people don't work backwards. They say, I have a meet the teacher I'm doing on Thursday, or I have an event I'm doing on Thursday, so I'm going to have a mass intro Saturday. What we do is we say, we're going to have a mass intro Saturday. What are all the things we're doing to fill it? Well, meet the teacher is only one thing. Calling the leads is right. only one thing. Having a buddy week is only one thing. I'm going to do everything I can because I already know I'm working Saturday. So I want to make sure I do everything I can to pack that mass enrollment. Whew. Perry, you talk a little bit. I'm getting winded. No, no I, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to at this point. Yes, I, well, um, I just gave no, no. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. No, like you said, you know, it's it's you, with everything that we're doing right now this time of year the the mass intros and is is really our bread and butter and we'll get what 40 students at some some of these schools each school you know depending on 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 how well maybe 30 to 40 potentially well, i know i know um, i just asked i just happened to ask avalon's goal is 40 new students this month yeah you know so and they if, signed if up you guys aren't on it yeah, yeah I mean, go ahead. i was just saying go ahead perry I was just saying, if you're not doing mass intros, this is the time to, to really put your focus and effort into it. By the way, pop up Shelby's post. Here she goes. Uh, yeah, promoting your event on social media ahead of time is a great supplemental tool for getting in front of a community. Uh, can you read the rest of that, Per? I like guess. Mr. Mike Metzger said, make sure all information regarding your event is available and visible on your social media platforms and major listings. Yeah, the biggest thing that I see in our industry is we do one thing to try to get big results and you can't, you gotta do everything to get big results. So it is social media, it is uh, emails, it is mailers if you do, if, if, if you have leads and addresses, it is phone calls and it is face to face. You gotta hit those five levels of marketing. So Shelby, you know, she does a great job for us and she is, doing all the social media and putting it out there about our free events uh, that, that are coming up. I mean, we, we do everything and to put it in perspective, right? You know, we, um, I, I just think this is an important thing to understand. We spent, I think it was like $800 last month on marketing because we were transitioning from a summer special to back to school special. Well, this month we're going to spend up to $6,000 on social media. So last month, 800, this month, 6,000. 
as our cap on on uh, what we're going to spend. And it's it's because it's that important. It's not because I look at that as an expense. Yeah. We know that's an investment. We know how that's going to pay for itself. Okay. Uh, Shelby, we have a, go ahead. We have, we have a question for Shelby. You can answer that, Shelby, on the on the post. How far ahead of the event date do you start marketing on social media? And I'll let Shelby respond with what we're doing here so you can hear it from the person who's actually doing it for us. Yeah, and there might be a little delay, but um, she's... Or there might be a long delay. I mean, there may might be, be a long delay. You know what I mean? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Shelby may be switching, but here's the thing. I would say, and, and by the way, I'm not the social media expert, so I don't like to 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 just answer those things because she would correct me. Um, but I would say it's it's at least maybe a, it's not like months, right? It's a week no. or two that we're promoting this thing heavy for a specific day and event. Uh, but when we, I can tell you this, we're in a lot of meat that, so I know with COVID, a lot of people can't do this. I know some of you aren't in your schools, but we're in meet the teacher today and tomorrow. And even when we're in schools tomorrow, if we're in a school tomorrow from, here we go, two to three weeks, we try to schedule all events on Facebook at the beginning of the month. Of course, if your event is happening in the first week of the month, prepare in the month prior. There you go on the social media. But what I will tell you is if we're in a school on a Friday afternoon, we still may be doing a, a mass enrollment that evening, like that quickly or the next day. We will not do a face-to-face -face and promote a mass intro if we're more than a week out, if we're face-to-face. -face. We will not do that, okay? So like, I would not be in a school today and I may be busy this Saturday promoting a mass enrollment a week for a week from Saturday. I would not do that. Too far, emotions are lost, people forget, and you're a distant memory. But with social media, it can keep popping up. It can keep see, being seen in their feed. Go ahead, Perry. Let me ask you a question here. So let, let's say, because you mentioned $6,000 is what we're investing in, into our marketing. But let's say somebody hears that number and it's like, I, I six thousand dollars. I just can't do that. What would you tell somebody who maybe has limits on on their marketing budget? Well, what I would tell you is get you know subscribe to the social media calendar because there's ways to get out into your community and build your audience if you understand it. But Shelby puts all that together and it's all done for you with directions and links to articles and copying and pasting and it's like it. I can't look. I'm not a social media person but this is copy and paste and explanations. I mean, the social media calendar that we have, I don't know if anyone else in the, put it this way, no one else in the industry has a social media calendar like this. And if somebody says, well, yeah, we have a social media calendar, you don't have it like this. I promise, check it out, check it out. Well, how do they check it out, Perry? Where can they find the social media calendar? They can go to myedge.com and, and start, uh, and can see what it what the me social media calendar includes. What I recommend though is reaching out to Shelby if you really want to see it. She she can and you, you haven't seen it before. She can do a walkthrough with you guys and and kind of show you what it's all about and show you how to implement it into your school as well. But there are ways to not spend a lot of money, right? It's just there's a there, you need to know how to do that, and I don't know how to yeah. do that. Hence why Shelby's on our team, right? And you have the Chris Rodriguez's in the world and people like that, because that's just not my forte, right? And I was thinking too, we, we can do the things that we've always done, which is again, get like you said, get out in front of your audience, develop those relationships with the local schools and the PTAs and, and uh, leverage that relationship to get into the schools and get back in front of their audience, especially if you work with kids. Right, and by the way, the concepts are the same for adults, right? If I'm trying to get an appointment for adults, I may not say, um, focus, flexibility, balance, and coordination. I'm going to say, look, I want to bring you in, see what kind of shape you're in, test you on your 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 flexibility, see where we got to work, and tell you which program is best. I'm just saying that because you mentioned, especially if you work with kids, and I know this was geared towards like yeah. kids, but we're just using kids because the majority of you 
work with kids and adults, but it's it's the same it's the same concept. Um, is and then Shelby said, if you don't have consistent organic social media and engagement, then your money will not be performing the best for you anyway. You can get results through free organic efforts as well. So implement a social media calendar first. It's 100 percent correct, guys. And this is the time to invest in your business. I mean, again, I said 800 hours we spent last month, 6,000 this month. The social media calendar is what, Perry? 100, 119 bucks or something? Or? 100, 119 bucks if you just get the social media calendar. Yeah, for 119 for hours, it's done for you. I mean, it's done for you. Now you just cop, what you do is you'll come in every day, look at the day. Today is the, what, fifth? Look on the social media calendar, copy and paste what's on the fifth, do what it says for the fifth. Don't worry about the whole calendar because it's overwhelming. When you come in on the sixth, look at the sixth and do it. It's an investment and you'll start getting much more engagement and more eyes on your business. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's, I don't know how else to say it, but you got to take advantage. We only get this time of year once a year, the back to school season. And this is where we enroll the most students, but it's also where you can lose the most students. And that's a whole different seminar. Social media calendar is awesome. I even follow myself just to see what's going on in my studio. <laughs> Very good. Good. <laughs> so what else? Any other questions from anybody? Remember, this is not about teaching. You may say, I'm great on the phone. You may be, but it's got to be duplicatable. It's got to be something that is that everybody that is, it answers your phone, if you're tied up, if you're busy, if you're out, can still get the same results. And there's a link there, Perry. Yeah, schedule a free social media, schedule a free social media calendar walkthrough with Shelby at that link. So you guys can just click that link in the comments and uh, set up a time with Shelby. And by the way, if you are on the Maya Edge site, you get this as part of the Maya Edge membership. So yeah. if you if you have Maya Edge, you have the social media calendar, and 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 that's now on the uh, that's now on the site, right? On, on the Maya Edge site. Yep. Yeah. So any other questions from anybody? Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Well, I hope everybody had a great July. I hope you're ready for August. Stay safe. I don't know if you heard. There's a Delta variant out there. Perry, have you heard about the Delta variant? Uh, yeah. There's talk about a a United variant and an American right. variant as well. I heard they're yeah. they're coming, but they keep getting delayed. Hey, I see what you're saying. Thank you, guys. It's over. That was it. Is the mic dropped? <laughs> uh, All right, everybody. Well. Hope you Thanks, enjoyed guys. the basic phone call presentation and got some details out of it. And like always, guys, if you need anything, let us know. Tassel, Mr. Shane Tassel is flying to Orlando. We have seminars tomorrow and Saturday. We're doing our next level summit seminar. And uh, we hope uh, we'll see you guys in a week. You know, we'll be back in a week and check in and see how you guys are doing. So thanks for tuning in. All right, guys. Thanks. Perry, thanks. Great job. I appreciate it. And yes, if you want to learn more about Maya Edge, go to mayaedgeinfo.com. There you go. Mayaedgeinfo.com. All right, guys. Take care.